Hey guys, Tiffany Ophelia Porter here where I discuss all things life after sport. As you can see, I am in the chair at a sister lock retightening appointment. I have my sister lock Tish in here. You guys saw her in the last video. This is a series where we are covering all things sister locks from a sister lock Titian's perspective. So we're gonna, in this video, do a little bit of a question and answer, break down what a consultation looks like, how to choose your lock size, and all different things sister lock. So let's just jump right into it. You ready? All right, let's go. She's going to be doing my retightening while we're having this chit chat. So it's kind of a two for one. <laughs> so can you share a little bit about the importance of a sister lock consultation? Okay, so the, the consultation is important because it allows the, the loctician to actually know one, if you can even get sister locks, um, because they need to look at the condition of your scalp as well as the condition of your hair. Um, they also check the density of your hair. They check the curl pattern of your hair because all of that matters when they go to install your locks. Okay. That is actually very interesting because obviously as somebody who has sister locks, I didn't even know that there was a subset of people who might not even qualify to get sister locks. So can you kind of speak to that? Because I'm sure that would be useful information. Yeah. So in order for you to even be able to get sister locks or even to just to do any type of interlocking, you have to have a curl pattern in your hair. So it don't it doesn't have to be a tight curl pattern like what you know, like what we have. It can be a very loose, you know, um, curl pattern, but you have to have something there. Okay. Because that's what allows your hair to start to start binding with itself is because of that curl pattern. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then you also mentioned something that, again, I never really considered personally, but just speaking to the state of your scalp, can you, can you talk about that? Well, you know, some people, um, some people might suffer from alopecia. And mm. so you don't want to go and keep putting tension on those areas and their spots. Some people have skin conditions where they need to go and see a dermatologist. They might have you know, dermatitis or something like that that's happening on their scalp. And so they need to have those areas treated before a loctician can come in and start manipulating those areas. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Some people might even have sores or, you know, people come with all kinds of conditions with their scalps. Have you ever heard of a colleague, like a sister loctician actually turning somebody away because their scalp wasn't healthy? Oh, all the time. Really? They'll tell them to go and see a dermatologist, and once they see a dermatologist, they come back to him. Okay. To be honest, that actually almost sounds like it's the ethical thing to do. It is. Because it's like some people <laughs> might just be like, oh, you know you're not supposed to be getting these sister locks, but they'll take your money, mm -hmm. and then your hair might fall out, or it might right. not give you the results you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But it's also a, a flag too, a red flag if someone doesn't, mm. you know, to me, you know, someone doesn't look at the condition of your scalp because that's how your hair is going to, you know, stay in your head. Makes <laughs> sense, literally. <laughs> so when you come into a consultation mm -hmm. as a loctician, can you kind of just walk us through the process? Like, what are you looking for other than scalp health and mm -hmm. curl pattern? Like, what are some things that are just really important for you to determine during a consultation you actually start looking at their hair so when you go to your consultation some people have tried to come to me with with their hair and braids i can't see your hair and braids mm. <laughs> and then some want to come like with their hair partially down no we need to have your hair in its natural state the full head so that we can actually look at your full head and see what's going on with all of your hair that's a good point because some people might just assume you looking at my hair, mm -hmm. but it might be right. Right, because as like as we all know, you have sometimes different curl patterns mm -hmm. in different mm -hmm. parts of your hair. Well, fine, and that's why you have some locticians if they notice that you do have different curl patterns, they may give you because also too during your consultation will give you starter locks. And so if we go ahead and we move past the process after we talk to you about it and we've discussed it, because not only do you, should you discuss like the scalp, like what size locks you want to have, um, the density of your hair, decide what the curl pattern of your hair is. Then they go in and they install um, the, test the tester locks. Mm -hmm. And those are usually different ones to determine which one is actually going to work on your head. 
Mm. And so if you have different curl patterns, they might do a few over here and then do some in that area that's a little different. Wow, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. And actually the perfect segue to talk about lock size. Mm -hmm. Cause I know you and I have talked about it before, but um, obviously sister locks are interlocks that are a certain like grid pattern, but also size. But even within the sister lock community, there are like small, medium and large sister locks, right? Correct. You're, so the women typically have two sizes. We have the small size and then you have the medium. And so when you get to the larger size, they refer to those as brother locks. Okay. So just for reference, taking a look at my locks, do I have small or medium? I'm pretty sure when they put them in, they were small. Okay. <laughs> but the base of the lock, not necessarily the size of the lock, mm. yours is small. Because that's literally what we, we look at. And so also in yours will be considered small or medium. Oh gosh, if mine are small. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you have denser hair, they're going to look a lot different than if you have finer hair, right? Mm -hmm. Because finer hair, you're going to see more scalp. So if you have a person who has fine locks, you don't want to give them a whole bunch of tiny locks. And the reason why is because as their hair starts to grow, and my mom is an example because she got such fine hair and her hair was done in such tiny locks that as it starts growing, the weight of the hair starts pulling at that base. And so oh. it becomes weak. And so she lost a lot of her locks. Mm. And I've had to combine a lot of her locks to make her base stronger. You know, that is actually to me a bit counterintuitive. I would have actually assumed if you have finer hair, you would want smaller locks mm -hmm. so your hair could look fuller. You, exactly. But it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Oh. Because you need something strong to hold the locks. You don't want three strands, you want 10. Okay. <laughs> that, that makes so, a lot of sense. Yeah. You see, guys, this is why it's important if you're ever considering getting sister locks to have that consultation. First of all, nobody's going to even install your sister locks without a consultation. Not but if they're a professional. Exactly. But some people might not necessarily understand the necessity of the consultation because it costs money, right? And well, it usually goes towards your installation, though. That's if you get an installation, but if you don't, if you don't, then it's just cost up to their time. Yeah. So, I mean, it is necessary. It's kind of a hurdle that you do have to jump to get sister locks, but very well worth it in the end, because ultimately that's gonna help determine just like your journey. It's like the the foundation, the beginning of your sister lock journey. Mm -hmm. So somebody who has denser hair, cause I was actually uh, under the impression that when you go to that consultation, the denser your hair is, the larger the locks need to be, but that's not necessarily the case. It's what you're kind of explaining. It's yeah, like, it's really, the, it's up to the client of what size they want. But at the same time, you need to have a loctician who understands if your hair can actually take that size or not. Okay. So that's why, again, that consultation is important and to show up in your natural hair. Mm. And I don't mean natural as in, you don't have a wall, you shouldn't have a perm in your hair because you're still going to have to have that natural hair. So it is natural. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the, the base of your hair has to be natural in order for exactly. you to get them. Because that's another thing that people might not necessarily understand. So people who have relaxed hair mm -hmm. or color treated hair or heat damaged hair, because my hair was heat damaged when I got my locks installed, that yes, you can get locks, but you need to have at least something. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be like having gotten a perm yesterday right. and then come think you're about to get locks. No, you need about a good four inches of natural hair. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, I think my heat damaged ends eventually just fell off. They will because they're not going to lock it in. And so when somebody comes in, does the price of the installation kind of vary like small locks versus yeah. medium locks? It's all based off of the, and it, it only matters, it's not necessarily because of the, the size of the locks, but it's the time it's gonna take. Okay. So, you know, smaller locks are gonna take you longer than mm. installing the larger locks. Yes. And so most of them, they should understand how long it takes them to do an installation and to be able to see somebody's head and say, okay, this person's probably gonna take me, you know, eight hours, 10 hours, and then charge accordingly. Now, hold on a second. When you say eight hours, 10 hours, do some installations, do they only take that little sometimes? Some people may, depends on how much hair they have. My installation was two days, 12 hours each day. Well, my installation was two days too, but it was only eight hours each day. And she really didn't even take the full eight hours because you're going to stop for your breaks and stuff. Oh. So mine probably was about 10 hours. 
Really? You got a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of an anomaly, apparently. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen part one of this series, make sure I'm going to link it right here. Make sure you check it out. Uh, but Melissa did mention that apparently I have like the most locks that she's ever done on a person's head before. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, uh, whereas like for her typical retightening, again, we mentioned all this in the, in the last video, so we won't go into too much detail on it, but a typical retightening for you was like three, four hours, right? Mm -hmm. About two and a half, three hours. And for me, it's like five, five and a half. Yeah. And it's not because she's moving slow. Like just, it's her same hands. It's just me, you know, and the amount of hair that I have. Apparently. And I have to make sure I get your hair into your base, all of that. So you have to really separate and part when they have high density. Oh, see, I didn't <laughs> even realize that was an extra added component. Yeah. Oh. Like, you know, you back here doing yeah. Trying to keep your, your parts and keep your hair. Yes. You see, I'm learning something new. I, I've, I've never been in the back of my head, so I actually right. didn't even know that. Yeah. Now, as a loctician, sometimes when you get transfer clients, mm -hmm. can you look at like an install and be like, oh, honey, she did not do you right. Or the converse, like, oh, man, this is an amazing install. For me personally, yeah, because you can look at somebody's hair. Because you, as long as their hair is uniform with their lock, you're not seeing holes in it, you know, and it just looks like a healthy hair hair, you're like your faces are strong, that's a good installation. Okay. Now, the parting and stuff, that depends on the client. You know, some people don't care about having perfect parts while some of us want them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I usually don't base it off of that. I just look at the condition of the locks itself. Okay. On that same vein, you can kind of tell a client who keeps up with the retightenings regularly if they don't have holes, or how do you determine that? Well, I don't know if you can tell like how regular they keep up with it, but you can just tell if they actually, you know, maintain their hair because with with having interlocks, you can't go but maybe three. Anywhere, I'm sorry, anywhere to four to seven weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like traditional where you can um, go months, you know, on end. Some people go six months. On yeah. End. No, we can't do that because our locks are so small and you're weakening that base that you can't do that. Something to consider, guys. If you are considering getting locks, uh, there are a vast array of types of locks. Inner locks mm -hmm. are the method that we use with sister locks. Right. A lot of micro locks can be interlocked or can be palm rolled. There's traditional locks that are palm rolled. And then there's just so many different types of, of ways to achieve your locks. But if you can't commit to getting it regularly maintained, then maybe sister locks or micro locks are not for you. True. Yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit about finding the right loctician because that's a conversation that I don't think people necessarily think about when they're in the beginning stages of their lock journey. So do you have any like tips on that? I would just say to actually know what it is that you're wanting um, from your loctician. And so like, I'm not a cosmetologist, but I too am in healthcare because I'm a nurse. <laughs> and so that's, that's where I come from. So if you're someone who is wanting your hair trimmed and you want color and you like your hair styled, then you might want to make sure that you actually have a person who can do that for you. Mm. You know, so you need to know what it is. And then not only that, understanding how your loctician schedules their appointments, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, what days are they available? How do they do their rescheduling if you have to reschedule because some of them are strict and all of these beauticians these days got all these rules mm, and stuff. tell me about so it <laughs> you just have to really understand what it is you want from your loctician and then ask questions yeah i wouldn't be afraid to ask them no questions because they asked you a bunch yeah so they're making sure you're a right fit for, for them right you need to do the same so it's almost like a transfer client consultation right Yep. Yeah, because you and I actually, do you remember ours? We did ours virtually. We did, we did virtually. Yeah. yeah, I was living in Ohio and I was getting ready to move here to Kansas City. And I remember we had a Zoom call and you had me turn around and you like kind Just of. Try to see your hair. Yeah. Like yeah. And then we had our very first appointment and it's been chemistry ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a little bit of like an unwritten rule amongst locticians about cheating on your loctician or like going behind their back to get have somebody else do your hair? Well, you do have some locticians that may get into their feelings. You have some who don't care 
Because you have some who would prefer you to keep to your schedule. Mm -hmm. I just said that you need to come in every four to seven weeks. Well, if they can't get you into their schedule, you're going to want to go somewhere else so that you don't have to be charged because they are going to charge you a higher price when you come after that seven week mark. Mm. And so some people don't want to be charged that extra money. Right. Especially if it's not their fault. Right. Yeah. And so they can go and try and find a new, you have some of them that will get upset. You know, I feel like they just need to get out of their feelings. Right? Yeah. So obviously you're not one of those locticians. <laughs> I'm, I'm also not a beautician. So that might be like, you know, yeah. on, the, on that side, but I understand, I guess I understand the client more so, you know, Yeah. because I, I get it. I do. I will say sometimes here's been my experience. I've had amazing experiences with locticians. I had one primarily in Michigan. I had one in Ohio and now one here in Kansas City. And it's been amazing ever since. Mm -hmm. But my journey to finding you was super easy. But my journey to finding my loctician in Ohio mm -hmm. was not that easy at all. I called maybe because of that area. Maybe it's not as diverse. Maybe mm -hmm. there's not a large number of locticians who are like perfecting that craft. I don't know. But I remember I had called at least three, you guys. Mm -hmm. And I was doing the back work before I even moved to Cincinnati. Right. And all three of them are like, nope, I'm not accepting and a clients. Lot of them don't like to take transfers either, because I was telling you how they don't like to work over other people's work. See, let's talk about that though. I don't uh, understand. You might need to find a lactician who has that point of view, and then maybe <laughs> exactly <laughs> they can. They can yeah, good point. <laughs> I want to know too, because I feel like if you're a professional, you should be able to correct whatever's wrong. Exactly. If you see something wrong, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. I get it that it might not be your style and you don't like it, but if your client is happy with it, then it shouldn't bother you. And at the end of the day, like turning away clients is hurting your business. Well, some of them, cause some of them already got some of the business that, you know. Maybe, maybe that's what it is, that the ones that I was calling in Ohio just were too booked and too busy to take on new clients. Like my loctician, she can't take any more clients. So what she does is, you know, she'll be like, cause I don't like to do installs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she'll call me up and be like, Hey, Melissa, you know, I got this, this person who's, you know, I want to get their hair done and she'll do the install. And then I, you know, they'll transfer over to me and then I'll, um, be and there. Then I'll yeah, do them. And then I've also had people who called me and I've sent them to her. And then she'll give me a, a commission type sort of speak. Okay. Actually, you know, that's how I found you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think I just Googled sister loctician. Mm -hmm. I think I was Googling more like in this area versus like in the city. Mm -hmm. And I called her. She was very nice, lovely lady. And she's like, I have a, I have a, a lady for you. And she gave me your number and she the rest is history. She installed mine and I've been with her ever since. So you've never had any I've other loctician? Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's, your hair looks amazing, so I mean, it, it makes sense. And she's a certified loctician, she right? Yes, and she's a cosmetologist. Okay, so she can do a little bit of it all. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is a great business to go into. You talk about that part too. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about it. Do you remember how much it costs to do like the sister lock training to become mm -hmm. a trainee? I don't know what it is now. Okay. But when I first did it, and back then too. This was pre-COVID, mm -hmm. um, and so now I think they do a lot of virtual. I paid twelve hundred and fifty. Okay. That sounds like a lot of money, but when you think about it, it's an investment it to only your took business. Me two heads to get my money back. Oh uh, yeah. Two installations. Yeah. And Fair. then I got my money back. Yep. You know, you shouldn't really think about that part. Yeah. You're not losing it. Right. Yeah. Is it like a weekend seminar that they they do? It is. It's a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yep, it was a four-day course. Okay. During the course, are there women who want to get sister locks? You guys just kind of practice in their heads or? No, they give you a mannequin. Okay. Now for me, so my parting is like horrible. Okay. And I'm not going to go and be one of the people and be like, yeah, I can do your hair, girl. And, and you know, and then you'd be having one of those TikToks. So this is what I asked for. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this is what I got. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be one of your people. I feel you. <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest. And I respect that. I respect that so much. Just setting just expectations and knowing your your wheelhouse is so important. But just speaking to like what the weekend looks like, is it like nine to five, like all day on those it four is, days? It is, it is all night day. Okay. 
So they literally talk to you about the scalp of the head. Okay. They go through the follicles of your hair. Like it's a deep course. It's not just a come in, oh, I'm gonna show you how to do the, no. They actually teach you how to maintenance it as well as install. Okay. When you leave the Sister Log training course, are you then officially a trainee? No. Oh, you still have to do Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. So you are a trainee. Okay. Yes. Okay. However, when you turn in your first qualifying head, then they call you a certified trainee. Okay. Because you got one in. Okay. Yeah. I got you. And then you still got two more to turn in before you become certified. A certified consultant. Yes. Certified got consultant. it. Yes. Got it. And when you say head, you're talking about installations. Installations on real people. Okay. And then not only that, they talk to those people. So they oh, do they? So they literally call that person up and they'll ask the person about their experience and everything. Oh, wow. How they get the consultation. What did they learn during the consultation? This locks in there. They make sure that you're home to their brand. And you know, I actually respect that. See, when you are getting sister lock it's a trademark hairstyle mm -hmm. like it's, it's there's a it's a brand and that's why they're so beautiful because they put so much time and effort to make sure when i say i have sister locks you know i have sister locks you know what i mean because even now all these years later you said my grid pattern still looking good you is would you say there's a lot of uniformity in the sides of my locks there is because yeah. sometimes my loctician was not like this, thank goodness. Sometimes you'll see they'll have them nice and small and uniform here, but in the middle, they'll be like bigger and- Yeah, well they do tend to do that. I don't know why, because especially up here, even in my head, uh -huh. they get real small. Okay. I guess that's because that's where people, where we style our hair. Yeah. And so they're trying to give you more options to be able to style. Which makes sense. So As somebody who sits on this side of the chair, I've never experienced what a, sister lock training course looks like and i actually learned something new today alongside with you guys and one thing i do love about sister locks that they are so particular about their brand but one thing that is also special is that they're so specific to the person so for instance i have very tightly curled 4c hair my sister is probably more of a 4b she could have the exact same number of locks, exact same loctician doing her installation, but yet her locks will look <laughs> very much different than mine. Obviously, there'll be some similarities in terms right. of size and grid patterns, but the actual locks themselves will look very different. So th that is one thing to also keep in mind. You know how sometimes you see somebody online and you're like oh that is hair goals i want my sister locks to look like that exactly. you can use it for inspiration and you can present that to your loctician but i think in that consultation a loctician would you say melissa should tell you like okay they, oh, she's got it. yeah it might end up looking a lot different <laughs> she, yes because sometimes people ex people's expectations are here and they might not be met the same time yeah. yeah. And then like you said, y'all sisters and y'all still don't even have Exactly. It, so you can't. Exactly. You can't. One thing I did find it very interesting, because I had like a master sister loctician uh, consultant that did my install. And I think she's even like kin to like. That's why you're so <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I actually think oh, she's like she the so grand good. niece okay. or something of Dr. Cornwell, literally. Okay. But my question is, I remember her asking me during my consultation, like how my diet is, how my <laughs> eating habits were. And I just remember they feeling- They also asked you too about your, your allergies and stuff like that too, and medicines that you're on. She did so ask me that. a pharmacist, you should not forgot about that part. Yeah, let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, because even, you know, some medicines that cause your hair to fall out. So that, that matters too. And then I guess one thing, the diet and water intake, she explained to me, she was like, because the, um, the amount of food that you eat and the type of foods that you eat are gonna affect your locks. I just remember thinking it was a bit excessive, but to she me was- it is, but I get why she asked you because just like a dermatologist is gonna wanna know because it's gonna affect the outcome of your hair. Okay. So you might have, like your roots might be falling out at the end and it could be because you're dehydrated. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So your base of your hair is just not strong and you're losing locks left and right. 
Yeah, I remember just being a part of the Sister Live community. I remember she told me that, that sometimes they go on cruises together. Okay. They have like Sister Lock merch. And I was just like, oh, wow, you and guys. You have merchandise, but I didn't know they did the cruises. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I've never attended, but I did hear that it's like, it's, it's almost like. So for, for like everybody who has Sister Locks or for like the consultants? Good question. I, I didn't ask oh, any more okay. details. I was not interested oh, in going okay. on a sister lock cruise if i'm being honest i was like girl just put these locks in my hair i'm a very non-fuss non-frill type of person where it's just like exactly i'm actually coming to get locks because i want something that's going to be lower maintenance not to be doing all this extra stuff but she was just very thorough and i i respect that she really like trusted in the craft and honed in on that and i, I can't even be mad at it Right. A lot of people's hair, because like my hair grows slow. Mm -hmm. And so your metabolism, that yeah. can play a part in it. You know, if you got PCOS. Yeah. I mean, all of those things play. So that's kind of why they ask those questions too. <laughs> And then you, you, even when you got pregnant, remember what you said? Yes, yeah, so with the postpartum hair yeah. shedding. Pause. <laughs> Guys, do not think, by the way, if you have locks that you're going to be immune to postpartum hair shedding because it still happens, but instead of your hair falling out as strands of hair, your hair falls out in clumps. Like my, all my edges were completely gone after having my daughter and after having my son. But I did figure out a reattachment method, and I'll link that video for you it's probably not sister lock official but it it is the it's method a it's a diy <laughs> reattachment method and it has worked for me so if you are looking to reattach any locks do not throw them away save those locks Holy and thing. go and watch that video because it's worked and actually after after the first reattachment i did have a few locks that fell off but after the second time none of them fell off she like she reattached them and and it's been a permanent fix so check that out if you are interested and if you guys do like videos like this make sure that you like comment and subscribe because i do have a lot of sister lock content just go check out my old videos we are going to make this a series and in fact i think this might be a good place to go ahead and stop this video so the next one we can address any questions that you guys might have down in the comments let me know if there's anything that you would want to ask a lactician because this is useful if you're on your journey or even if you are considering getting locks all of this can play into you being on this journey so let me know down in the comments what you want to see next melissa thank you so much for this conversation it's always a pleasure having you and i will catch you guys in the next video peace